The Red Couch is brought to you by CyberGhost VPN. Terrorists' favorite email provider, China outlaws, internet rumor, and should I buy shares in Twitter? <music> Jamie Lee Curtis has a penis. Walt Disney is cryogenically frozen and buried under the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in California. And Richard Gere had to be rushed to hospital because a gerbil mistook his backside for a tube of Pringles. For us, baseless rumours about superstars are a fun way to dethrone the rich and the beautiful. But for the Chinese, emailing a friend that Britney Spears had a gallon of semen pumped from her stomach could mean three years in a gulag. If your Chinese web post contains a false rumour that draws 5,000 visitors, you could be charged with defamation, meaning up to 36 months behind bars. The Chinese authorities censor mainstream media, which means social media is the only platform through which the Chinese people can discuss politics. But the authorities have said that false online rumors can no longer be defended as freedom of speech. Is this an excuse for China to further crack down on internet freedom? But what kind of slander are the Chinese publishing? Well, last week the Beijing Regional Platform for Jointly Refuting Rumors published its top 10 online rumors in China. Let's see who they're libeling. Number one, a bus was kidnapped in Bozhou, Anhui province, but it wasn't really. Number two, 1008 2006 is a telephone number owned by conmen. But it isn't. The number belongs to an old woman who lives in a paddy field. Number three, in Guangdong province, an infant soup is cooked up, made up of body parts of babies. But it isn't really. It's just a rumor. It didn't really happen. Now, China does not know how to make online rumors fun. These are just boring and odd. None of them rank alongside Lady Gaga is a man, or Paul McCartney died in 1969 and was replaced by a robot who randomly creates songs using the music and the lyrics of the ex Beatles back catalog. These defamatory statements do not make people look bad, they make China look bad. And China is like a paranoid diva ready to quash any criticism with threats of court action and public humiliation. China, just like that gerbil that wasn't in Richard Gere. Pull your head out of your ass. The Red Couch is brought to you by CyberGhost VPN, a virtual private network that allows you to surf the web securely and gives you anonymity online. The man who authorized the spying on your emails, ex-CIA director Michael Hayden, told a church audience that Gmail is the favored email service provider of terrorists. Why is Gmail so loved by homicidal fanatics? Well, we decided to ask one. As a fundamentalist terrorist committed to holy war against the American infidel, I have to multitask. A father at home, a businessman at work, and, in my spare time, a suicidal slave to a higher power. I was never a fan of Gmail until earlier this year when they created customizable, yes, it is a word, customizable tabs that put me in control of my inbox. Google's new arrangement of messages perfectly mirrors my complex lifestyle. Now I can compartmentalize, yes, it is a word, compartmentalize all my communication. In my primary tab, I get messages from my wives and my kids, but it's all a la this, a la that. <laughs> I like to keep that separate from my social tab, where I have online dating. <laughs> Currently, I'm sexting with a chiropractor from Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> I like to keep my promotions under another tab here. I receive offers from ex-KGB agents who want to sell me depleted uranium stockpiles for my next dirty bomb. And forums 
online discussion groups, they're my favourite, where me and my brothers can sip some over-sugared tea and plan how to nuke the Hoover Dam. <laughs> Thanks Gmail, the perfect secretary for Jihad. Internet Dilemma of the Week, Twitter is launching an IPO, the biggest public offering in tech since Facebook last year. So the question is, should I buy shares in Twitter? Yeah, why not?